You are good to start. Okay, I'm just gonna wait till the recording in progress goes away. You might have to hit that uh, button. Mercy, can you take care of that for me? Give me one second. There, one's good. We seem to get the other one. Okay, I got it. They're both on. So I'm gonna stop here welcoming welcoming you all to my class. Thank you so much for coming. This is my first class. And before we get into actually making our project today, which I will explain that later, I want to begin by telling you a little bit about myself and then we'll move into the materials, the pattern, what you'll need and how to make your hat and pom pom. So to start with, I started to crochet when I was five years old after my aunt found a crochet hook that she had in her basement and some yarn. And then my mom found me a YouTube tutorial on how to crochet a dishcloth. And from that dishcloth, I was able to make so many more things to the point where I'm traveling around the States, going on TV shows. And now I have two books on my website, joinhands.com. So crochet has given me a lot of fun things and experiences of helping others in my life. And now on to what we're making today. We'll be making this hat. To be exact, it's the Bernat Easy Crochet Hat from Yarnspirations.com, and it's two colors. And these two samples are made. I made it in a tweed and a solid for the pom pom and the brim. And it's a very simple hat. It's good for beginners because you use basic stitches like single crochet, chain, and reverse single crochet. And then we'll also be making a pom pom with the yarn. So the supplies you will need are two balls of Bernat Softy Chunky um, in two different colors. And I have three here. I have Navy Night, Pumpkin, and Hot Pink. And then you also need your crochet hook. You, whatever size you can obtain gauge with, whether that's a nine, a 10, or an 11 and a half, all of those who work for Bernat Softy Chunky and slightly change the size of your hat. You will also need a pair of scissors, any scissors, a plastic needle from Michael's, a bigger one with the bigger eyes so you can fit the yarn through that hole. And then I'm using a Clover large three and three eighths inch pom pom maker. So those are your materials. And now it's time to begin our pattern. So I'm gonna switch my camera down to the hands view and then you'll be able to get started. Okay, so. For the hat I'm making, I'm going to take my pumpkin and my navy knight, and I'm gonna do a blue brim and pom-pom with an orange pumpkin body. So I'm gonna set this navy aside. So my pom-pom maker, tape measure, needle and scissors to the side. And then I'm gonna dig into the center of this ball and try to find that center pole because it's much smoother to crochet with. Pull this last part out and then report my pattern. So here's the pattern, which you'll be able to have access to. It's the Bernat Easy Crochet Hat. And your first step is to take your main color. And my main color is the pumpkin. And then you're going to start by chaining two and working eight single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So I'm going to sew my pattern up here. And of course, the first step is making a slip knot. So you're going to lay your yarn over your left hand and stick up your first two fingers, index and middle, and wrap around, creating an X on the bottom. And on the top, it's straight. And then you're going to insert your hook underneath, grab that loop, pull it off your fingers. And grab both of these strands right here, the short one and the one attached to your ball, and pull them. And then take your long strand, 
and pull it to the hook, but make sure that it's loose so that I can slide, but it doesn't have too much space in between. And now it's time to work your first stitches. So to do your chain, you have to take the yarn and go around the back and come to the front and then pull back through. Come around the back to the front and pull back through. And I'll take a moment and if anyone needs me to go through the chains again, just let me know in the chat. Yes, again, please. Chain and slip knot or just chain? There is a question on how tight. Okay, so I'll go through the slip knot and the chain again. So you lay it over your left hand and then wrap around in your two fingers and make an X on the underside and come back up. And then you're going to go underneath and then grab that loop and pull it off your hand and then take these two strands and pull them at the same time. And then this loop is way too big right here. So I'm going to take my long strand and pull it. And you want it tight enough so that there's not a big loop where you can like stick your finger in there because my finger doesn't fit in there. But you want it to be not so tight like this where you can't slide it around. You want to be able to Slide it back and forth on your hook, but not have it be too loose on your hook. So now I'm going to go through the chain again. So you come around the back, to the front, and then angle your hook down and pull back through. Come around the back, to the front, and pull back through. And I hope that helped with the tightness, the tension, and how to work the chain. So I'm gonna move into the single crochet. And we're gonna start by working eight of them into, the, into this chain right here, the first chain. Because there's two Vs in your chain. This is the first chain right down here, and this is the second. And you're gonna skip this one right here and go back to the first chain you created. And you can go under just one loop, under the back hump, under two loops, however you'd like, just go into it. I like to personally catch two loops and then can use me a tighter circle on top. Then you put your hook through that loop, take the yarn around the back to the front of your hook, pull back through and pull up. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. Now, if you didn't get that right away, we're gonna do it seven more times for this first row. Insert into that same space. Yarn over coming around the back to the front. Pull through. Yarn over and pull through those two loops. Again, insert. Pull up. And pull through two. So that's three. Then you're going to do it again for four. And making sure you go into that same loop, because if I pull it up here, you can see this loop opening up. And if I turn my work, you can see these V's on top. So this is this number one, two, three, four. I need to add four more. Five. Six. Seven and eight. Now, how's, it, how's everybody doing right now as of this point and moving on to row two? They are doing good. That's good, yeah. And if you, you can take the strand on the back and then just pull it nice and tight and then you'll close up that center ring. And then to start your next round, you're gonna put your hook under your first stitch, which is those top two loops. And then you're gonna yarn over and then pull back through. 
and your first row is complete. So if I pull back a little pattern now, our next row is putting two single crochets into each stitch and we'll have 18 stitches. So that's an increase in single crochet. You chain up one, and in that same spot where you slip stitched, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert again, pull up, and over, pull through two, and stir. And then after that, you've worked your first two stitches. I'll show you that again. So go to your next stitch and work one single crochet. And then work another single crochet. So that's working an increase because before this was two stitches and now it's four stitches. So into the next spot, I'm gonna work two more single crochets. And you need to continue doing that all the way around. Just take your time. And then after you work so many increase rows, you'll be able to just work straight moss stitch in the rounds, which is actually just single crochet and chain one. So it's a very simplistic hat. I have four stitches left. Four. Three. Two. And one. And now I'm going to end this row, how you end every row in this hat, by going under my first stitch, the top two loops, and pulling back through for a slip stitch. And if we take a moment and look at our hat, here's our ring, eight stitches to start with, 16 for the next round, and here's our beginning tail. So now I'll give everybody just a moment to ask any questions as needed. And if we need to go over any part of that row again, or for set to move on to row three. I have a few that are saying, if you can please repeat. Repeat the, repeat the row or what in particular? Just that last, the last steps that you did in general, kind of speak through what you just did. Okay. So I'll start by saying, for this row, what I've done, if I pull it up nice and close to the camera, is that I've worked two single crochets into each stitch. So I'm gonna to go to this next stitch here, which is my last stitch, and pull up a loop, and over pull through, insert, yarn over, yarn over and pull through, so I've worked two single crochets in my last stitch, and then I'm gonna insert through these first V right here, the top two loops of my next stitch. Yarn over my hook, pull back through, and don't, do not yarn over, just pull this first loop right through the second. Did that clear things up? Yes, thank you. Okay, now if you pull out our pattern, move on to row three. It's one single crochet in the first stitch and two in the next. So we're doing a part of the hat called the crown where it shapes out like a circle and then you work flat rows and that kind of builds it up kind of like a bowl shape. So now we're gonna chain one, which is how you start your row. And then you're gonna go into that first stitch and create a single crochet. And go into the next stitch and work two single crochets. And then go into the next stitch and work one single crochet. And into the next stitch, you're gonna work two single crochets. And this is increasing. So in our first round, we had eight. Next on the 16, 
And this next round is going to be 24 when you're complete. So in the next stitch, work one single crochet. In the next stitch, work two single crochets. One single crochet in the next stitch. Two in the next. And you need to keep repeating that by alternating one single crochet in one stitch and then two single crochet in the next all the way around. And you'll know you're on track if you count the tops of your stitches and you have 24. How's everybody coming on round three of your hat? So I have, uh, I think they are making along with you. I do have a question. Should a new crocheter use a stitch marker? That depends. You could use a stitch marker, but when you're not working in the round, it's not necessary because if I pull this up, you can see that right here, it's clearly higher than right here. So you know what, this is the start. Now, if you were working in the round, which is another form of crochet, commonly used in the Japanese art of crocheting and garumi, you would put a stitch marker there to hold your place. But it's not necessary because you can easily tell that this part right here is bigger and taller than this row right here. So you know that you'll put your hook right where it starts to get tall and slip stitch in there. So I'm gonna continue doing my two single crochets in one stitch and one single crochet in the next. And see so now I'm at the point where it's time to slip stitch because I finished round three. So I'm gonna go under my top two loops, yarn over, pull back, and pull right through the slip stitch to my first stitch. And there you have it, round three. Eight single crochets, 16 single crochets, 24 single crochets, and you can finish up your round while I now look at the pattern and explain row four. So row four is going to be working your stitches in two single crochet and then doing two stitches into the next stitch. So you do one single crochet, two single crochet, two in the next stitch. I'll show you what I mean. So first we started off by working two single crochets in each stitch, and then we did one single crochet and then two. So for this row, we're gonna chain up one. And then that first stitch, create a single crochet. And then in the next stitch, put one single crochet. And then in your next stitch, put three single crochets. I mean, not three, two single crochets, my apologies. I'll say that again, just to clear up any confusion. In your first two stitches, you put one single crochet. And in your third stitch, you're gonna put two single crochets. And don't worry, I have a whole round that you repeat those stitches so you'll be able to see it again. So I'm gonna put one single crochet in the next stitch. one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet in the next stitch. And I'll keep repeating this around so that way you can see how it forms. And I'm just gonna pull out some more yarn. I pulled my ball from the center so that made it a little easier to center pull without it moving around. And the next stitch, I'm gonna work one single crochet. Gonna work one single crochet in the next stitch. and two single crochets into the next stitch. Any questions about how this row is establishing? This is row four, and we pull out our pattern, the final row before we're able to start shaping it down.
I don't have any questions yet. Perfect. So I'm going to continue by working one single crochet, two single crochets, two into the same stitch, And I'm going to continue this pattern around. There is a question on which size are you making? Are there different sizes in that pattern? There are, there are different sizes, but I'm going with the adult size. Um, it's actually meant for an 8 to 12 year old, but the way it's constructed, it's a very stretchy hat because I have the I have the same size hat as my mom, and she's an adult, of course. So and my the wears the hat she wears fit me. So as you can see, it's an adult size hat. And if I take out my tape measure and measure at the base of the hat, you get ten inches, so twenty inch circumference. Um, so in the average adult head size is twenty to twenty three inches, and it has a lot of stretch to it. And then height is eight and a half to nine inches which also which is also average for the adult so it is just for eight to 12 year olds this size but it does fit the measurements for an adult hat and it has some stretch and then in the next stitch you're going to put two and then i'm just going to finish up this row because it's the same thing that we've been doing this entire row Okay, and now I'm going to come into my first stitch here. Pull back through and pull through. And that's row four. So now we have to move on to row five and then we're able just to continue going around and around. And if you wanna make the size for four to six year old, as it says, you can just completely omit this row and wait till we do the next row. But since I'm making the adult size, I'm going to do this row. So for this row, you have to chain one and rip one single crochet in the first 15 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. And now into the next stitch, we're gonna work two single crochets. And then in the next 15 single crochets, we're gonna work one single crochet. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. And you should have one stitch left. And in this last stitch, we're gonna work 
two single crochets and then slip stitch to your first stitch. If I lay it down, you can see that's our first row and it already does kind of want to come up a little bit. If I turn it from this angle, you can see it kind of curves up a little bit. And now let's pull out our pattern again. And the next row is where we start the moss stitch. So I'll set my pattern down and have a moment where anyone can put any questions or any things you want to let me know about how the hat's going for you in the chat. So we have a few comments that they're making along with you. And then we have others that are just watching, uh, saying that you're an inspiration to them and uh, that they're going to go back and watch the recording again and, and try it again. But there are a lot of comments that they're excited to meet you, have you teaching this class, and that you are an inspiration. Well, I'm really happy to hear that you're all glad to be here and that I'm, that I'm an inspiration. And don't forget, this video will live on Michael's website, so you'll be able to watch it anytime. And they'll also be able to get the free pattern um, from yarninspirations.com and print it out. And then just use your Bernat Toffee Chunky and you'll be able to make it in no time. And it's the, it's the best hat for Christmas gifts, too. So you can start planning ahead, even though it's still summer. Okay. Oh, oh I do have a question before you move on. Can you do the last stitch again in this row before the slip stitch? Yes, I can do the last stitch. The last stitch is just two single crochets. So into the last stitch, I'm gonna work two single crochets. There's the first one. There's the second one. And then I'm gonna slip stitch. And there's our five rows. And now, next up is single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, skip a single crochet, and then go into the next. So we're going to chain up one. And this is where we're going to start the moss stitch, or also known as the linen stitch, too. And you're going to single crochet into that first stitch. Then you're gonna chain one, skip your next stitch right here and go into the next one and work a single crochet. Then you're gonna chain one, skip your next stitch and the one after that, you're gonna work a single crochet. Okay, you can see how you have your Three single crochets so far, and then two chains. So you're going to continue chaining one single crochet after skipping, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch. Single, single crochet, and you keep repeating this around the row. How's everyone coming? They are doing good. Uh, there is a question. What project would you recommend for a, a first fun project when teaching nine to 10 year olds to crochet? Oh, that's easy. For teaching nine to 10 year olds crochet, the best thing to make is simple friendship bracelets. You can either make just a chain, like I showed you how to make two chains earlier, or you can make three chains and then braid them together with them and you can give them out to your friends at school, to relatives, aunts, uncles, grandparents. So friendship bracelets are what I recommend to kids when they're first starting to learn. And for a second project, I'd recommend a little dishcloth or a small four by four inch coaster. And then for the third project, this hat. So I'm continuing to work my one single crochet and one chain around. So 
This row is almost finished. And at the end of the row, you will be, you'll have one row, not one row, one stitch left. And that's a stitch you will skip again. So I have about eight stitches left. There we go. Chain one, and then I'm gonna work a single crochet in the second to last stitch. And now I have this last stitch right here, but I'm gonna chain one. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch right here. If I pull out the pattern, our next row is the chain two, and then continue working the moss stitch. So I'm gonna chain up two, one, two, and then go into this first space right here and work a single crochet. And then I'm gonna chain one and skip this next single crochet and go to the next space and work another single crochet. Chain one, go to the next space for a single crochet. Chain one, go to the next space and work a single crochet. Chain one, go to the next single crochet. And you can kind of see that moss stitch starting where they're kind of offsetting each other. Because up here it's complete solid single crochet. And now that you're kind of coming down, it's starting to form into actual moss stitch. What did you say the name of that stitch was again? It's the moss stitch, but there's many other names, um, including the linen stitch. That's another one of the names, but people call it different things. There's also another stitch, which is very similar called the mesh stitch, but this is not the mesh stitch. This is the linen or moss stitch. Thank you. And then there's another question. What do you recommend as the best crochet hook for kids? For kids, I recommend just the basic. Like, like this one is a Susan Bates Crystal White. So Susan Bates Crystal White, but Another one, if kids, like, if they're really not interested and you want to, like, have them pick out their own crochet hook, there's, like, just plastic glitter crochet hooks, and I, kids find those really interesting. So I then think, think that'd be a great one to start with. And specifically hook size, I recommend an 8 to 10 millimeter with some chunky yarn, like for not talky chunky, so that their product goes quick and they can get that instant gratification that really encourages them learning more. That's great information. Thank you. So I have two, two spaces left. And I'm here in my last space. I'm going to work a single crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch into this space right here, this first space. Then I'm going to chain one and in that same space, work one single crochet. And then I'm going to chain one and into the next space, work a single crochet and continue that moss pattern all the way around. And those are the two rows for the body of your hat. And then you keep working those rows until you've established the length that your hat needs to be. And then you're able to work the reverse single crochet on top of a straight row of single crochet for your thin brim and your pom pom. Any other questions? I'm getting the moss stitch. You can see there's a sample of it right here in these rows where they're offsetting each other. Any questions on how to do it, how to space it? Um, yes, if you can just repeat that stitch real quick. Okay, so 
the mass stitch and say chain one, skip the next single crochet and go to the next space, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, go into the next loop, underneath that space and work another single crochet. And then you need to keep continuing that and that's one row of your repeat. So there's the first row and I'm at the end now. So I'm gonna chain one and slip stitch to my first single crochet. And then I'm gonna chain two and go to the next space right here and work a single crochet. And then I'm gonna chain one and continue working my mesh pattern around. Is there any other questions? No, there's a comment that says you make it look too easy. Well, I mean, I've been, I have been doing it for eight years because I'm 13 now and I started when I was five. So after eight years of experience, this kind of hat does come fairly easy. But since there's no other questions, what I need you to do is keep repeating this row. And as you can see, this is how your hat's going to start forming. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my charity and my philanthropy work while I just go through working these rounds. And just keep repeating those last two rows that Jeff showed you. So first of all, I'll start by saying, oh, I just saw a question came up in the chat. What was that? It's, uh, do you have any new designs to share? I don't have any new designs to share, but I do have um, a couple new exciting videos that just came out. So I, I love to crochet, of course. And one of the parts of crochet, which I actually happened to mention earlier is amigurumi. And that's where, to someone's point that they mentioned in the chat earlier, you would be using stitch markers. And amigurumi is the form of making small stuffed creatures. I mean, they don't have to be small, but that's the exact definition. And then you stuff them and sew parts together. And I bet many of you are familiar with Pokemon and you probably know what they are from when you were a kid. So Netflix reached out to me to crochet Pokemon and to do little videos of them. So on Netflix Futures, you can go to the YouTube channel. I have videos up there right now of me making Pikachu, who's like the little yellow hamster, and then Squirtle, who's a blue like turtle from the Pokemon show. So be able to check that out on Netflix Futures. So that's one of the new things that's happened during this pandemic for me. So I will quick do a little bit of talking about my philanthropy work. So I was adopted from Ethiopia at six months old. And the area where I was adopted from, it's a very poor rural area. No, for example, the buildings don't even have tile flooring, it's dirt flooring. So it's not, not good conditions in any means. And my parents made the several week trip to go there and bring me home. And now I have everything I could possibly want, education, books, family, dogs, crochet, a roof over my head. So now I've been working with my mom, my family, and thousands and thousands of people around the world and celebrities. And I was able to build those kids an actual library because they didn't have a library. And they also didn't have a science lab. So I've been able to build them a library and a science lab. And on the website, jonahands.com, I have a donation link and all sorts of different things that people have really helped me along the way. So my next step is giving them restroom facilities because they don't have those either. They don't have plumbing or anything of the sort. How's everyone coming along on their moss stitch rows?
I don't see any comments to that, just um, that you are very inspiring and a great teacher and a human being. They love that story. Um, oh, we do have a comment that they made cactus and succulents to what you were talking about you, you picked up. And then, um, oh, I just had a question come through. Can you show how to finish a row again? Yeah, so let me get to the end of this row. I'm just gonna crochet through this row. Almost there. Okay, here we are. So we're gonna go into our last space. Oh, that's kind of glitching. I'll give it one second to catch up. Okay, so you're gonna go into your last space and pull up. And then you're gonna yarn over and pull through. And this is the second round of the repeat. Can you ask? Um, can you let me know whoever asked that question if you want round one or two of the repeat? Because this is round two. Let me find that. Uh, round one. Okay, so let me just finish round two. I'm just going to crochet through round one and then I'll show you how to end round one. Okay, so I'm now nearing the end of round one, so I'm going to chain one. And in this last space, work a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and come to my first stitch, which is this single crochet right here. And stitch the top two loops, pull back, and pull through, and I've joined it with a slip stitch. Kind of spread it out and you can see the stretch it has on it and you can see that moss stitch starting to appear. So now you need to continue working those moss stitch rounds and you need to keep going around and around. I see a question popped up. What is that? Yes. What are the differences between round one and round two? The difference between round one and round two are simply the way that they're started. Round one is started with a single crochet, and then round two is started with a chain two. And that's because when you're working the moss stitch, if I pull it up close to the camera again, they have to offset each other because one row is right here. The next one's right here, then it's over here. And that's what creates that texture and the appeal of the stitch. That's why you have to work the rows differently. Okay, and uh, Richie has a question. Should you be stretching it as you go? It does help like put your moss stitches up in line and spread them out. And that's how your hat kit comes like this and down. Now, I, I just checked my time. And I'm gonna to try to keep this class to an hour, but I don't have my full hat done down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish this row 
And then I'm gonna show you how to do the brim and then the pom-pom. So the hat won't be as tall as it's supposed to be, but it's the same process because I want you guys to be able to know all the steps, but you you can do more moss stitch on your own. So is that, is that something like a good plan to everyone so I don't take up too much of your time and keep this class to an hour as it should be? Yes, that will work. Sounds good. So I'm gonna finish up this row. And remember, you can always come back and watch it on Michael's website, it's gonna live there. And then I'm gonna, oh, I'll show you how to change colors now. So I'm going to slip stitch through my first stitch like I normally would. And then I'm gonna snip my yarn. And then I'm gonna pull through that loop and pull tight. And I'm gonna be doing my brim in this navy night color. So I'm gonna try to dig and find that center pull. There it is. And then I'm gonna insert into that same pull right here. Pull up and then chain one. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna work around a single crochet to start because you're running short on time. I'm just gonna go straight into showing you the reverse single crochet. But if I pull out this sample, you can see we have our crown up here, our big pom-pom. Then we have our moss stitch down here around a single crochet and then this edging. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that edging, but no, if when you look at the pattern, they'll be around a single crochet first. So you're working single crochet again, but you're working it from right to left. You're working it backwards. So you're gonna insert your hook into the stitch backwards behind it. Pull up a loop and over pull through. And so into the next stitch coming around the back like this, going behind it. So you're working the reverse way you normally would. So you're gonna go into the next stitch, come back and come forward. I see someone saying why, but you can see this when we're doing single crochet the normal way, it looks like this, but when we're doing it the reverse way. Oh, wait, can you see the difference? That's why we're doing reverse single crochet. It adds that little cool edge there. I see a question there. What is that question? It says you are working counterclockwise rather than clockwise. Well, when you're working, the, when you're working like with the way this is facing, it doesn't really matter. You're just working the opposite direction of what you would normally do. So if I, you can see the difference now. So I'm gonna come to my next stitch, come in around, pull up. Pull through, insert, pull up, pull through. How are people coming on this? It's a little tricky, but you'll be able to come back and watch the video. Yes, there are quite a few comments that they will be re-watching the video. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, but once I get closer to the end of this row, I'll show you it again. But there are a lot of compliments. You are a great teacher. So basically, I'll show you it again. You're going to come and tilt your hook backwards and go through that stitch and then pull up a loop. And then you have two loops on your hook like normal single crochet. You're going to yarn over and pull through two. And this is one of those stitches where it looks when someone's doing it a lot harder than it really is, but it's really the same thing as single crochet, you're just working it backwards.
I'm nearing the end of this row. And then we'll be able to move on to the pom pom. I have about six or so stitches left. There's a question, are you working two stitches in one loop? You could do that, or you could put one into each loop and then one into each stitch. It does not matter. Or you could just put two into each loop right here. It's your choice. Okay, and then do you just do one line for the brim? Yep, just one line. But what you start with is you first start by doing the round of just single crochet. And then you do this. I'm just showing you this part first. So that way I can show you how to do the first single crochet because we still have to make our pom pom. And then once you get to the end of your row, you come around the back and you insert. And then you slip stitch like normal. So I'm going to take my yarn and cut it. And then I'm just going to take the strand and pull it up. Then if I flip my hat over, you can kind of see how it would form, except it would be longer, like down to here. But now it's time to make the pom-pom. So let's get straight into that. How much time-wise left for the class? You have at least uh, 10 minutes. If you okay. need a little bit more, that's perfectly fine. Sounds good. Okay, so now we're gonna do the pom-pom. So I'm using um, the Clover pom-pom maker. I The set I got from Michael's has four in it. I'm using the largest one, which is three and three eighths inch diameter. So you have to separate it like this. And then you're gonna take your yarn and lay it across the top like this. And wrap around, hold it, and then wrap around. Then you just have to keep going around and around. And making sure you fill up all the spaces because you want a good full pom pom. Keep wrapping around, trying to make it even, and then you're just gonna keep going until you fill up a nice majority of this area down here at the little crest or arch. And don't wrap these too tightly because you do need to cut them afterwards. And then now that you've done half, you push that half in to lock it. Then you pull your yarn more over. And then you continue wrapping around the other side. Trying to make them about even and filling it in. Don't have much left to wrap around this one. Just take your time and wrap it full. Does anyone have any questions on how to wrap it? No, no questions. Okay, well, we just finished up. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, are you counting? No, we don't count. They're, it, it just turns into a circle. So as you'll be able to see what I mean, I have not counted and you'll see my pom pom will turn out perfect. You could Great. just just wrap and wrap and wrap till it's full. So then I'm gonna cut this strand. 
and then you come up and you just cut your strands right down in the center here, like right between these two spaces. Just cut them a little bit at a time. And then you can see it starts to separate and give way. I have to keep just going at the center and doing little bits by little. That's why I recommend doing these small scissors because it ensures that I just use the little bits. Work at the top a little bit and then come back down into the middle. You can snip through that last stitch. And you can see already that this is going to be a fluffy pom pom based on the amount on each side that when you shake it out, it's going to be nice and fluffy. I see that there is a question that just popped up or a statement I'm not exactly positive. It's saying that they're on the handout, it's showing using your hand. What do you think of that option to make the pom pom? You can use that option, but I do recommend doing this option. It gives you a nicer, bigger pom pom, but you can just follow the one on your hand. That one's very simple. But I like this one. It gives me a more round, easier pom pom, and it makes it a little fuller. And it, I think that the size fits the hat better. I think the one on hand isn't, isn't big enough. So the video on your top down is gone. I there we there. go. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. And we're just going to snip a little bit away at a time again. Just take your time. It does take a while, but it makes up for it in the end. And you use the smaller scissors and just do little bits. Uh, Richie is saying that there's an old fashioned way with using a cardboard circle. I'm not familiar with that way. <laughs> but I've seen people do it other ways, um, using their hand. There's, I've actually seen it done using folded paper. So there's a, there's a lot of ways to make a pom-pom. Do whatever way you prefer, but today I'm showing you a new way or the way you always do it depending if you use the pom-pom makers or no. But I do like pom-pom makers and you can always have different sizes because there's four different sizes. You can even make tiny, tiny pom poms that are like one inch in diameter. And that's really small, like this, this big. And then you can trim it down even smaller. So now we've cut all the way around. And then you're going to cut a long strand. and come around and you tilt it up and put it, oh, I need to cut this part right there. You're gonna put it between the two halves and pull it down then flip it over and make sure you pull it in because it takes a while to like squeeze it in there. Then you're gonna work a basic knot like this, kind of like a, a sim simple square knot and then just pull tight and try to get it all the way to the base. And then come back up the other side. Pull 
for another knot and then just double knot that one to make sure it's extra secure. Then you hold these strands right next to each other and take the patches on your pom-pom maker and then just pry them up one half, pry up the other. There we go. There we go. I'm going to take them, separate them, put the center of it back together, set my two yarns back over here. And then you have your two center strands right here. And then this is kind of the wrong shape, so you can just kind of do some trimming. Set it off to the side. And then you can kind of just shape it with your hands after that too. And I'll do some more trimming afterwards. But this is basically a pom pom. It's nice and fluffy and you'll put it right on here. Now, of course, remember your hat will be bigger than this, so it'll be proportioned like this hat. But the way I like to add them is to come up to the top of my hat, come on one side of that first row, hook on the pom-pom and pull it through one strand. Then on the other strand, come to the other side, pull back through, Flip it inside out. And then just work a really tight bout of knots and then just weave it through the top on the underside of your stitches. And you're pretty much good to go. So we tuck these strands inside. And get these things out of our way. So to recap, we have our crown of our hat, the moss stitch, the navy brim, and our fun pom-pom. And as you can see, this would actually be a good size to put a baby if you took off some stitches, but it'd be, it's a good height. So you can actually kind of move around with this hat by adding increased rounds or taking off some of the increased rounds. So you can make different sizes, but this size is good for an adult if you just make it longer, of course, and add more stitches throughout. And now you can come back up to my face view. And here we have our two hats. This first sample I made in the burgundy tweed and then the midnight tweed. And this one's in the midnight tweed with a teal on top. So there's a lot of things to love about this hat. And it's never too early to start making them for gifts for the holidays. And please don't forget to check out my website, journeyhands.com, Netflix Futures for my Pokemon crochet videos for Netflix, and my Instagram, Jonah Hands, and my Facebook, Jonah's Hands. I hope you enjoyed this class, and please make sure to check it out on Michael's website. Thank you so much, and crochet away, friends. Have a wonderful rest of your day.